is as follows. You'll need your Tic Tac container. The main component of the coil gun is a circuit board from inside of a disposable camera. Uh, you're going to need a coil of wire. You can also make your own by taking something like a pencil um, or a marker and wrapping it in wire. There's tons of videos online on how to do it. But I was lucky enough to find this one here out of um, some type of car part. I can't remember which one. It's almost like the windings of a motor. Uh, and it has a little barrel on the inside. So saves yourself a lot of time. And that's a very nicely wound coil. We also have some tape. Some wires, um, a switch for the trigger, a pen barrel for the tube, a spring also for the barrel, uh, the ammo. Um, I have all these little metal rods. And the tools we will need are a pair of scissors, knife, and a hot glue gun. So the main coil power will be provided by the inside circuit of a disposable camera. As you can see, this is the circuit that controls the flash on the camera. Essentially, what I did was went to a local camera shop and they have all these used cameras that people give them after going on vacation or whatever. So I actually was able to collect, let me show you real quick, this bag of probably 100 cameras. Uh, so I, I can do lots of these projects or sell them, give them away. You let me know what you guys want to see. But anyway, what you do is, as long as it has a flash, you take apart the camera, and really the only thing inside is this sole circuit board. Essentially what it consists of is a big capacitor, a battery, and the flash um, light bulb thing. So this is the button which you usually would push on the front of the camera. And when you do so, the uh, capacitor is charged with the battery. Uh, this one here doesn't really say on it, but I've read before that some of them say like 300 volts. So they're pretty powerful capacitors, and that's what we're going to use today to make our coil gun. First step is to wire up the circuit board. So I have a few wires here. These have alligator clips on the end, which I like because they make them super easy. Um, before working with these circuit boards, also always be sure to take something metal with an insulative handle and bridge the two capacitor terminals together. As you can see, I'm doing it now and it's not sparking, but very often times these will still retain a charge and you do not want to shock yourself with them because it hurts quite a bit, I will know from experience. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing is adding some wires to each side of the terminal on the capacitor. So I'm going to just clip on the first alligator clip there, but just so we don't want to accidentally bridge inside the Tic Tac container, I cut off just a little square of electrical tape. I'm going to put it in between the two posts and wrap it around the little alligator clip just like that. Then when I connect the other one, as you can see they have no way of touching. And uh, basically we're going to bend them up as far as they go to keep this unit as compact as possible. Next up, go ahead and put your unit inside the Tic Tac box. This one here is a large Tic Tac box, the ones with like 100 mints inside. This is also the special edition for breast cancer, which is uh, quite exciting. Anyway, so as you can see there, I just placed the circuit board inside the box and basically the button that I was mentioning earlier that has to be pushed is right there. You can see it there. So what I'm going to do now off camera is take out the box, then using my X-Acto knife make a hole so that you can access the button from outside the Tic Tac box. There it is, the very first time I tried it ended up working pretty good. Now as you can see to charge it up, you can easily push that button. The nicest thing about using a Tic Tac box for this project is that the lid already comes with a perfect sized hole that you can just feed your wires into, feed them through, and then place the lid on your Tic Tac container. Now we're ready to wire. Quickly before we get to the wiring, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the barrel assembly. So this is our coil. Um, as you can see, it has a blockage in the back, which is perfect so our ammunition doesn't just roll backwards. And then uh, the barrel is going to be out of this pen tube. And what I'm going to do is use this spring over top of the end of the pen tube, just like this, uh, to kind of widen it up a little bit and give it that little sci-fi look as well. Then using some hot glue, I'm simply going to attach it 
to the center of the coil just like that. There's the barrel attached to the coil with the hot glue gun and also I've attached the coil just on top of the Tic Tac container with the uh, prongs for the coil facing the opposite way of the wires so that we have lots of room for wiring which is our last step of the project. So for the wiring I'm going to be using this uh, three prong two way switch. I don't remember the exact terminology on how to label these switches but uh, this is the type I'll be using today because it's the perfect size to be a trigger for my gun. Now essentially uh, how they work is when this is in the right position these two prongs are connected and when it's this way these two prongs are connected. So what I want to happen is as a regular gun would when you flip it backwards these two provide power to the coil so basically this is a very simple circuit we're going to do so uh, there's two wires coming off of the capacitor the first wire you can just send to one of the terminals on the coil uh, if you put it to the wrong one the coil will just shoot the projectile backwards in which case you'll have to switch it to the other one so that it'll come out the barrel then essentially the other wire, this yellow wire here, attached to either prong on the switch. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do this without soldering, even though soldering would be ideal. Just put it through the hole and give her a twist. Then for the middle one, I'm going to attach my other wire. As you can see, the hole is soldered through. Um, but if that's the case, fear not, we can just send it around and then bend it down. I'll do that off camera with my wrench. And then the other little tip of the alligator will go to the other prong just like that. And now I'll just go ahead and hot glue the trigger or the button that will be used as our trigger in somewhere just like that. And there you have it, the final product. I'll give you a quick overview. Uh, I mounted the switch like I said. And in order to get the polarity right, I had to switch up my wires, which is why it looks a little messy. Let me see if I can zoom in on it here for you guys. Yeah, there it is. So I had to switch the polarity so it fires forwards, not backwards. I also took it out so it's a hollow tube, but that makes it nice and easy for loading. You just put your piece of ammunition in the back, even overhang a little bit, and then you're good to fire. I, and I switched out the board for one with a slightly bigger capacitor. This one says right on it, you can almost read it right there, it says 330 volts. So I know it's one of the big ones. So let's go ahead with a shooting test. Our target today is going to be that mushrooms can on top of the Pizza Pops box. And so I'll show you the first one on camera from start to finish. And then the rest I'll just do a little compilation. So there's the button, I'm going to hold it down for about 5 seconds. One two, three, four, five. In a future video I can even add a voltmeter to make sure we've hit our volts. Uh, so first up let's fire maybe this little six millimeter dowel. So essentially you put it just in the end of the coil then holding it like a real pistol as it should be. Let's go ahead and hit the mushroom can in three, two, one. Alright, that one wasn't the most powerful shot. Let's see if we can get a few more with a bit more volts and different projectiles. And for my last shooting test, I'm going to shoot it just towards my kitchen so you can see just how far it goes.